وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode from this brand new series brought to you by Al Madrasa Al Umariya, the title of which is based upon the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, "Waqala Rabbukum Mudu'uni Astajib Lakum, Call on Me, and I will answer you." And we had reached in this discussion on the topic of du'a, its etiquettes, its virtue, its importance, the things that make it answered, and the things that prevent it from being answered and an explanation of some of the comprehensive ad'iyah, the dua that the Prophet used to make that was very comprehensive. All of that, inshallah ta'ala, is coming up in the series, bi-idhnillah al-kareem. But right now we reached the general discussion, introducing the topic of dua, this time from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa So we're going to start with a hadith of An-Nu'man ibn Bashir, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa arda, or we should say radiyallahu anhuma. May Allah be pleased with him and may Allah be pleased with his father, both among the Sahaba, radiyallahu anhuma. And he said that the Messenger of Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, ad-du'a'u huwa al-ibadah. He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, du'a is ibadah. Thumma qara, wa qala rabbukum udu'uni astajib lakum. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِي This is Surah Ghafir, ayah number 60. And the Prophet ﷺ recited this ayah. We mentioned this in the last episode. And your Lord said, call upon me and I will answer you. Indeed, those people who are too proud to worship me will enter Jahannam disgraced. Will enter Jahannam disgraced. So in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, الدُّعَاء هو العبادة. دعاء. This is عبادة. All of the the essence of what عبادة is: lowering yourself before Allah, hum, having humility and servitude before Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Al Zul, Al Khudu, Al Ubudiya, servitude, humility, submission, uh, f- presenting yourself before Allah as a slave as a poor slave that has nothing. That whole concept that you find within ibadah, that is exemplified by dua. It's exemplified by dua. And Al-Hakim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he narrated with a fair chain, a hasan chain from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma marfu'an from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he said, afdalu al-ibadah ad-dua. وَقَرَأْ وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ The best kind of ibadah is dua. Now when we say the best kind of ibadah here, we have to be a little bit careful what this means. That isn't a statement which is to be understood in an unrestricted way in the sense that uh, the time for salah comes, but instead of doing my dhuhr prayer, I'm making dua instead. That's not the meaning because this tafadul bain al-a'mal, this issue of making uh, certain actions more important than others and better than others, it has a fiqh to it. It could be different depending on the place you're in, the time you're in, the ability that you have, the uh, what is required from you in that particular situation, in that particular situation. Uh, because if the time, for, if the iqama for dhuhr comes, then what is required from you is to pray dhuhr. And there is nothing better you can do then except to pray dhuhr. Because the iqama for dhuhr has gone and you are, you know, muqeem, you're in your place of iqama, your, your home place, your home city, and the time for the iqama goes. There's nothing better you can do than to go to the masjid and pray in the jama'ah. That's what you have to do at that time. So you shouldn't understand this in the wrong way and take this to mean that. Uh, that even when there are other things that I have to do, like your mother calls you, for example, but it's better for me to make dua. That's not what the meaning is. 
But this at least indicates the importance of dua and its high status among the ibadat that the Prophet ﷺ said, Afdalul ibadat, the best act of worship is a dua. And Abi Huraira radiallahu an narrated a hadith. This hadith is found in Jami' al Tirmidhi from the Prophet ﷺ that he said, Laysa shayun akrama ala Allah min al dua. There is nothing which is more noble in the sight of Allah than making dua. So these ahadith indicate the virtue of dua. They indicate the virtue of dua. And as we said, there's certain reasons, and the scholars spoke about some of the reasons for this. And by the way, this is a fantastic book on this topic, which is the book Fiqh al Ad'iya wal Adhkar, the Fiqh of dua and dhikr by Sheikh Abdul Razak ibn Abdul Muhsin al Badr, Havidahumullah. Uh, this is an amazing book. And the Sheikh really went into a lot of detail in this. And much of the class that I'm delivering to you is going to be taken from this book in a summarized form. We're not teaching the book here, but just many of the benefits here. And the Sheikh mentioned in this, he mentioned that there are the scholars, when they talk about the reason why dua has such that virtue, uh, they put forward a number of things. And I'll mention a few of them. One of them is that dua contains a tadarru' ila Allah. It contains submissiveness and showing your need of Allah, showing your weakness before Allah, showing your desperation and your need of Allah Glorified is He and exalted in His perfection. Dua really shows that essence of ibadah, as we said. And another thing the scholars mentioned is that ibadah, the more khushu' is in the, the heart, the more the heart is submissive and attentive and dedicated towards Allah, and the more concentration a person has, the more their mind is present. This is better and more complete. And dua is one of the closest of the ibadat, the most likely of the ibadat for this to be present in. It's easier. I, I mean, subhanAllah, how difficult it is, for example, when you're praying in your salah and, you know, to keep that khushu' and that concentration and that presence of mind and presence of heart. It's not easy to do it when you're praying in the salah. But in dua, it's relatively easier to achieve. And it's something which is natural that you're, when you're asking for something and you're pleading Allah for something, that generally it's easier for your heart to be present for your mind to be present, to have that state of attentiveness and submission and desperation, it comes naturally within dua. And so dua really exemplifies what you should have in all of your, in all of your ibadat to make them from the best of the ibadat. Also, some of the things that scholars mentioned, they said that dua comes along with and it's, it necessitates tawakkul and isti'ana billah. You can't, when you're making dua, the essence of that dua that you are making is tawakkul. That's the essence of the dua you're making. It's saying that, oh Allah, I don't have the ability to do this. If I have, don't put my reliance in you, I don't have any way for this to happen. So it brings about tawakkul. And it is the essence of isti'ana. And that's why the Prophet said in the famous hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, if you ask, then ask Allah. And if you seek help, seek help from Allah. Dua and asking Allah brings about isti'ana. It, it entails it. It's, it, it. it has to be there. It's mulazim. It has to be there. The, the two of them go together. That the essence of what you're doing when you're making dua is that your dua comes along with tawakkul and comes along with Seeking help from Allah, because of the position of isti'ana in Islam, so important. Look, seeking help from Allah. Look at how Allah just said in Surah Al Fatiha, isti'ana was singled out among all of the ibadat to be mentioned in Surah Al Fatiha. It was singled out. You alone we worship, and the ibadah that's singled out, you alone we, we seek help from. 
So dua comes along with that and embodies that so and, and it necessitates that. So that is another reason why dua is from the best of the ibadat. From the hadith that we can quote, which really tell us part of the virtue of dua and the importance of dua is that which was narrated by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad and by Imam At-Tirmidhi rahimahumullahu ta'ala in his Jami' and Ibn Majah in his Sunan rahimahullahu ta'ala and others with a fair chain from Abi Hurairah radiyallahu an the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said man lam yad'u Allah subhanahu ghadiba alayhi whoever doesn't make dua to Allah Allah becomes angry with them Say, my Lord would not care for you, would not give any concern to you if it were not for your dua. Whoever doesn't make dua to Allah, Allah becomes angry with him. And an Imam al Bukhari narrated in Al Adab al Mufrad, outside of his Sahih, outside of Sahih al Bukhari in Al Adab al Mufrad. And likewise, Ibn Hibban narrated in his Sahih from Abi Hurairah, from the statement of Abu Hurairah. And al Tabarani narrated it from him, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. nasi man ajaza an dua wa abkhalu nasi man bakhila bis salam. So this was narrated as a statement of Abi Huraira by al Bukhari in al Adab and by Tirmidhi. And it was narrated by others as a statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is that the person who is the most unable to do something, ajis, that has, is totally, has the most inability, is the one who is unable to make dua. And wallahi, it's so true. Even if it is a statement of Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu, but this is, subhanAllah, so true. So, so true. That subhanAllah, if you can't even make dua, we're not talking about praying five times a day or a person who, uh, you know, uh, giving a lot of sadaqah for the sake of Allah or a person who's going to hajj and umrah or a person who's fasting the days of the year, the month of Ramadan and the Mondays and the Thursdays. But the least of the things, dua is so easy to do. It's the least of things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires from you. The smallest thing that's so easy for you to do. From among the things that are extremely easy to do is a dhikr and a dua. And that's why the person who is really truly ajiz, like truly just completely unable, like really is, is, is not doing anything at all, that's the person who can't make, even make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that has also a reverse benefit that when a person is struggling, and, and uh, you know, if we, we talk about some of the people who might be watching, you might have relatives or friends or family who are struggling. Maybe they're struggling to pray. Maybe they're struggling with the, you know, the, the, the important, critical acts of worship in Islam. One of the things you can start them off with, you know, when they feel like I'm, I'm ages, I can't do anything, I can't pray, I can't just, I'm irregular with it, I can't make, keep be consistent with it. One of the beautiful things you can tell them to do is dhikr and dua. Just to start them off, just to get them, you know, to get them in the status. And, and subhanAllah, dua to ask Allah to give you the ability to pray, to give you the ability to fast, to give you the ability to do the actions that are required of you in Islam. Just to, just to say a few words. Oh Allah, make it easy for me. SubhanAllah, how difficult is that? It's one of the easiest things in the world to do. And that's one of the beautiful things about dua is how easy it is for a person to make uh, dua. Al-Imam Ahmed and likewise Al-Imam Ibn Majah, rahimahumallahu ta'ala, they narrated from Thawban radiallahu an, anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqaled, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, la yaruddu al-qadr illa dua Nothing repels the decree except dua. This is a hadith that sometimes people struggle with because we have our belief in qadr. It's a rukun min arkan al-iman. It's a pillar from the pillars of iman. People struggle to understand this. What does it mean? 
But as in essence, without going into too much detail, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made dua a cause to protect a person and to keep a person away from negative things that might otherwise have happened to them. And that dua doesn't go outside of the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. That dua doesn't go outside of the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. It doesn't go outside of the lohan mahfuz. It's still from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about and knew about before he created you and the things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the pen to write. But if you had not made that dua, there was a qadr, there was a decree waiting for you for something bad to happen, but you made that dua which didn't go outside of the qadr of Allah Azza and the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that dua was what prevented that thing that would otherwise have happened, that would otherwise have happened to you. And therefore dua is one of the major means of achieving happiness in this world and the next. It's one of the keys to happiness in this world and the next is to call upon Allah and to make dua. And I'm going to give you a quote from Al-Imam Ibn Qayyim, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He said, Asasu kulli khayr. And ta'lam, anna ma sha'allahu kan, wa ma lam yasha' lam yakun. He said, the essence of everything good is for you to know that whatever Allah willed will happen and whatever Allah didn't will will not happen. فَتَيَقَّنَ حِينَ إِذِنْ أَنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ مِنْ نِعَمِهِ فَتَشْكُرَهُ عَلَيْهَا وَتَتَضَرَّعَ إِلَيْهِ أَلَّا يَخْطَعَهَا عَنْكِ He said, so then at that time you become certain that all the good things that happen to you are from the blessings of Allah. So you show gratitude to Allah for them and you humble yourself and submit this yourself before Allah in fear so that Allah does not cut those blessings off out of a fear that Allah will not cut those blessings off from you. وَأَنَّ السَّيِّئَاتِ مِنْ خِذْلَانِهِ وَعُقُوبَتِهِ And that the sins that happen are from the punishments of Allah and from what Allah Azza wa Jal brings about which lower, to lower a person and to, and to take down their status. فَتَبْتَهِلَ إِلَيْهَا أَنْ يَحُولَ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهَا so you turn to Allah and you, you beg from Allah to make something, to, a, a barrier to come between you and between those sins. وَلَا يَكِلَكَ فِي فِعْلِ الْحَسَنَاتِ وَتَرْكِ السَّيِّئَاتِ إِلَى نَفْسِكَ And that Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't leave you and abandon you to do good deeds and to leave sins by yourself because you can't do it without the help of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's, what, that's just part of the quote that Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, in the, the essence of, of, of you believing that all the good deeds are from the blessings of Allah. If Allah left you alone to yourself, you wouldn't be able to do those good deeds. And keeping away from these sins, that's from what Allah Azza wa gives you the tawfiq. Like Ibn Al-Qayyim said, it's in the hands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. La biyad al-abd. It's not in the hands of the servant. فَمِفْتَاحُهُ الدُّعَاءُ وَالِفْتِقَارُ وَالصِّدْقُ الْلَّجَأُ وَالرَّغْبَةُ وَالرَّهْبَ إِلَيْهِ The key, what is the key to opening up the state of knowing this and submitting to this? What's the, what's the key to it? The key to it is, what's the key to the tawfiq of Allah Azza wa Jal in this? The success from Allah, the key to it is dua and presenting yourself in a state of poverty and desperate need and truly turning to Allah and seeking refuge from Him and hope and fear of Him. When you take this key, like Ibn al-Qayyim said, when, you, when Allah gives the servant this key, He said, فَمَتَى أَعْطَى الْعَبْدِ هَذَا الْمِفْتَاحِ فَقَدْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَفْتَحَ لَهِ Whoever Allah Azza wa Jal, whichever person Allah gives this key to, the key of dua, this is a person Allah really wants to open things up for them, open up opportunities and doors and, and a means to success from them. وَمَتَى أَضَلَّهُ عَنِ الْمِفْتَاحِ بَقِيَ بَابُ الْخَيْرِ مُرْتَجَّنْ دُونَ He said, whenever the person 
loses or Allah causes them to lose this key, which is dua, the things that he mentioned with it, then the person will not be able to reach the door, the means to be able to do good. And then Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, وَمَا أُوتِيَ مَنْ أُوتِي إِلَّا مِنْ قِبَلِ إِضَاعَةِ الشُّكْرِ وَإِهْمَالِ الْإِفْتِقَارِ وَالدُّعَى He said, and the people who were put to trial, they were only, they only suffered these trials because they lost gratitude and they lost their need of Allah and they lost their dua, making dua to Allah. وَلَا ظَفِرَ مَنْ ظَفِرَ And no one was successful who was successful. بِمَشِيئَةِ اللَّهِ وَعَوْنِ by the, by the will of Allah and with Allah's help. إِلَّا بِقِيَامِهِ بِالشُّكْرِ وَصِدْقِ الْإِفْتِقَارِ وَالدُّعَى Except because of the person was grateful, they showed gratitude, and they were truly, they truly showed their need of Allah, and they made dua to him. There is a hadith that I would like to conclude this episode with. And it's a rather long hadith. It's narrated by Imam Muslim from a long hadith, and it's the hadith of Abi Dhar radiallahu anhu. But this hadith has many, many benefits in as it relates to dua and our desperate need of Allah Azzawajal. And that dua is the key to opening up the doors to success. And from this is, and this hadith is a hadith Qudus. It's a hadith which the Prophet Sallallahu narrated from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. In which Allah Azzawajal said, Ya ibadi, kullukum talun illa man hadaytu. Fastahduni ahdikum. O oh, my servants, all of you are misguided, except the one that I guided. So seek my guidance, and I will guide you. Ya ibadi, kullukum ja'i'un illa man at'amtum. Fastat'imuni ut'imkum. O my servants, all of you are hungry, except for the one that I feed. So seek food from me. And I will feed you. Ya ibadi, kullukum alin illa man kasautu. Fastaksuni aksukum. O my servants, all of you are naked except the one that I clothe. So seek clothing from me and I will clothe you. Ya ibadi, inna kum tukhtiuna bil layli wal nahar. Wa ana aghfiru zunuba jami'a. فَاسْتَغْفِرُونِي أَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ All my servants, you commit sins in the day and the night. And I forgive all sins. So seek forgiveness from me and I will forgive you. Until Allah Azza wa Jal said, يَا عِبَادِي لَوْ أَنَّ أَوَّلَكُمْ وَآخِرَكُمْ وَإِنْسَكُمْ وَجِنَّكُمْ قَامُوا عَلَى صَعِيدٍ وَاحِدٍ فَسَأَلُونِي فَأَعْطَيْتُ كُلَّ وَاحِدٍ مَسْأَلَتَ ما نقص ذلك مما عندي إلا كما ينقص المخيط إذا أدخل البحر. Oh my servants, if the first of you and the last of you, or oh, and the men of you and the jinn of you stood on a single plane, and all of you asked, and I gave every one of you what you asked for, that would not detract anything from what is with me, except like the needle detracts when it from the water when it takes when it's dipped into the sea. When you dip a needle into the sea, does the volume of water in the sea decrease? No, Allah. All the water that's coming into the sea, by the time you dip the needle and take it out, the water didn't decrease anything. If Allah gave all of us, everyone watching this video, everyone on the earth, every jinni, every human being of all time, from Adam until the last human being on this earth, and they all asked Allah at a single time, one time, and they all asked Allah for everything that they wanted and Allah gave everyone what they asked for, it wouldn't decrease from what is with Allah except like the needle that is dipped into the sea. And the reality is that when you dip a needle into the sea, nothing from the sea is lost. And as we said, the hadith is narrated by Imam Muslim and this really shows us our desperate need of Allah and it shows us that dua is the key. If we use this dua, dua is the key, dua is the key for us to be able to open this door to good and to open this door to the forgiveness of Allah 
to the things that we want in the dunya and the akhirah, to all of the khayr that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gives to his servants, the key to this is a dua. So we really have to show us the importance of dua and our need of Allah azza wa jal and our need of making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's what we have time for in this episode. And Allah azza wa jal knows best. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.